I'm sure you guys have heard a lot about the resurgence and discussions around VDI in recent times. Understandably so, because the virtual desktop infrastructure, or VDI, the main key value around it was to enable workers to work literally anywhere, and more so now. But today's discussion is not about the values of VDI. So a close friend recently called me up and told me about how he was going to deploy a VDI environment given the scenario that he was in. He was just trying to ask advice from me, um, you know, what kind of storage he needed to buy or what kind of service he needed to actually run this VDI environment. And then I, I kind of went like, whoa, are, are you not deploying Hyperconverge in your setup? And he goes and asks me, um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not quite familiar with Hyperconverge and I'm a little bit iffy with regards to going Hyperconverge. So this was a complete surprise to me because I always thought the discussion between VDI and HCI was a given and it was a done and dusted discussion. Everybody knew the value that both of these complementing solutions brought to each other. I made a couple of calls to customers and partners alike to get a little bit of feedback and understanding of what their thoughts about VDI and HCI as a combination. So today I'm going to share with you four reasons and four misconceptions that I found out that needs a bit of a refresher. The first discussion point is around maturity. A lot of customers and partners told me uh, some of the feedbacks they've been getting is around the maturity of Hyperconverge. This is a very interesting uh, discussion point because if you are aware of the hype cycle where you go through the hype where you know the product can do everything and anything and come down to the, the trough of disillusionment, Hyperconverge is actually at that bottom of that circle. What it simply means is that you know for all the early hype that it was, the market is becoming normalized that they understand the use case of where HCI fits in. And interestingly enough, VDI is right at the top of that list. Having said that, a lot of the hyperconverge or HCI solution, be it VMware solution or all the other competitor solution, um, mind you, is not a version one. If you're not aware, HCI solutions have been around for slightly more than 10 years now. And that's a testament of the maturity of the product. The reason why HCI and VDI was such a popular combination was also the part about simplicity and how easy it was to kind of get up and running and deploy. So to that point, back then, you know, customers were telling me, oh yeah, it's simple because, you know, technically there's not many functions, so hence it's simple. But again, if you look at the offerings today, it's more than 10 years old. Whatever the capabilities that you have and you saw in the traditional storage and 3-tier architecture is now already available on most HCI platforms. So the claim that HCI is simple because it's featureless is completely untrue. I suggest you go check out your favorite HCI vendor, have a quick look at their data sheet and what they can and cannot do, and you will soon realize they are pretty much on par with most storage subsystems in the market. So to the point earlier about being simple and easy to deploy, that's my definition of speed. And speed means go to market really quickly. So in this instance, in this COVID situation that we are in, getting a solution up and ready, it's extremely crucial. And nothing gives you that flexibility from a storage and compute subsystem perspective than HCI. So for those who have tried setting up a full-blown storage array before, you and I know how long it takes. But if you've set up vSAN for that matter, you also know how long that's going to take and it's far from featureless like I mentioned earlier. Next is performance. The biggest misconception is performance on a storage or legacy SAN is a lot better than what you get on a hyperconverged infrastructure. That again is far from the truth. I mean, it is fair back in the day when you only have hybrid systems where you run on 7.2K RPM drives, it takes a lot of drives to make up whatever the storage array can afford. I mean, the storage array can have hundreds and 200 disks. It's very, very difficult to compete against that on a server level. But what's changed? The massive change here has been the introduction of flash arrays or all flash drives, even NVMe. And we're now talking about persistent memory moving forward. That actually levels the playing field with regards to servers versus traditional storage. So how much performance do you really, really need? I mean, I've sized many, many VDI systems and I've not come across a requirement that I can't service with HCI that I needed the traditional SAN to do. In fact, I've got high performance databases, um, 
big data installs that actually ran on HCI. So it is really, really a non-discussion point to say HCI is actually less performant than traditional storage arrays. When HCI first started, you can only buy it in the form of appliance. And there probably was like one or two brands you can pick from. And they were very limited in profiles and what it could or couldn't do. Having said that, the landscape has changed significantly today. You can pretty much buy any form of server and turn it into a HCI solution. And to my earlier point of performance, you can, you can think of anything, right? You can buy any certified NVMe drives or high performance NVMe drives or persistent memory, etc, etc and build the most gigantic and most powerful beast of HCI today. So that brings you to the point where you have options. So options is a very, very powerful thing. I mean, in my opinion, in the time of need where supply lines are frozen and you need to kind of get servers, um, you, do, you want to get your hand on anything to bring up an environment, having the ability to pick almost any platform in the world to build a HCI solution on, it's priceless. Hopefully I've given you a little bit of information with regards to the use case of HCI and VDI. It's not quite your usual discussion point of cost and all this kind of stuff, but um, take it as a more revised version uh, for 2020. I'd also like to give a shout out to one of our partners. Uh, they deploy a lot of VDI solutions for VMware and I'll leave some of the links below. They've got some pretty, pretty sweet deals um, on a per user basis if you like. Uh, so do check them out. Having said that, as always, if you like the content, uh, do subscribe or leave me a comment. And till then, stay safe and be well.